Welcome back to DA Griffin Hobby. Today I'm working on this pre-war Lionel 2224W tender. Uh, shortly after I got this, I decided I had wanted to run it with uh, post-war trucks, so I swapped it over. And it's fine, it works. Uh, I mean, I pull 99% post-war cars, so it didn't make sense to me to keep it with the pre-war trucks. But I've had a change of heart, and I want to change it back, so that's what I'm doing today. It came with one of my 225Es, but it's a pretty awesome tender. The inside says 2224T3, so tender and whatever the dash three indicates, maybe the part, because the coal load says 2224T5, and the coal load is separate uh, from the tender casting. I guess that's the like the bake-like plastic, and then the tender itself is cast, and it's a pretty neat tender. I'm pretty psyched I have it. While I've got it apart, I might as well see if the whistle's working. Uh, I know I had serviced it previously, but I really haven't used it in quite a while. Okay, well it works. Probably well enough that I don't want to mess with it. At least not mess with it too much. I can't really resist messing with it a little bit. I just can't stand it when I fiddle so much something stops working. That's real pain in the butt. Okay, so that's working pretty well, so there's really not much of a reason to mess around with it right now. I can only speak for the whistle units I have inside right now, and I think most of them are older ones, possibly pre-war. I'm not positive, um, but at least this one. You can put a drop or two of oil right here, and a drop of oil right there, uh, just like you would on a motor for one of the engines, and that will give it a little bit of lubrication. Uh, I've had ones where the blades wouldn't turn or they were really scraping and I actually just sprayed a whole bunch of WD-40 right in there or right through there and then just kind of shook it all out and let it dry and it, it helped. I don't know if that's a good idea, but it has brought a dead whistle back for me. The way this works, like the rest of the three rail stuff, it grounds to the outside wheels in the frame. Uh, and the center rail picks up the power and unlike uh, an engine where the power comes up to the E unit this comes right up to this spot on the motor just to one of the brushes power goes from there to the relay and the relay here is what's activated when you hit your whistle switch and it brings this plate up and makes contact here and that's what completes the circuit and sends the power to your whistle. So if you have a whistle that's not working, one of the things you can do is while you're giving it power is just move this up so that it makes contact right here and see if that activates the whistle. These can get stuck. So move it a few times. You could, I guess, put a little bit of lubricant here at these pivot points. I don't know that if it's necessary or not, but other than that, to service it, it, essentially you take the brush plate off and do the same thing you would for an engine and you clean the brushes and the, the commutator face on the armature there. And that's about it. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and put the pre-war trucks back on this. If you're gonna be taking the trucks off things, you can always just get a a bag of these clips because they do break. So I'm going to get both the trucks off so I can desolder them and then reinstall the, the older trucks. 
So that one you're able to get to. This other one is under the whistle, which you can take the whole whistle off if you want, or you can also pop the relay out and you just take that one screw out of the place, out of place and move the relay. And then you can get to it. Now, you may notice there's two holes here. That's because, I'm sure somebody's gonna be angry with me for this, I drilled an extra hole <laughs> because the post-war trucks don't sit in the same place as the pre-war trucks. And while it wasn't a problem in the back of the tender, it was a problem up front. So did I ruin the value of this? I don't know, it doesn't matter to me. I'm gonna keep it forever anyway, or at least that's the plan. Another difference is that this only has one pickup. So I don't need two wires. I heat this up and pop these wires off. There we go. Okay, well, since I've already heated that wire up more than I wanted to, I'm just gonna snip it. It's always good to clean the uh, old solder off before you try to attach new. If you happen to have three hands, it makes it a lot easier. I do not have three hands, so I struggle sometimes. Since I don't need wires, uh, two wires to the trucks, I'm just gonna snip this one off. It's uh, quicker and easier than desoldering it and resoldering it. Uh, everything looks okay. Usually a good idea to start with fresh wire when you resolder something. Clean connections are always worth it. I like to put the wire from the top down, so that way there's a little bit less chance of it shorting against the frame. That's on there good. This could probably use a new roller. Uh, if this was an engine, I'd be tempted to replace that, but considering I don't really use the whistles that much, I think it'll be just fine. I like using something like a pair of diagonal cutters to squeeze it because it tends to slip less than a pair of needle nose, at least for me anyway. But you want to squeeze them tight, but you don't necessarily want them to pop up like that. And if you squeeze them too tight, they will break, which is why I said, you know, get a bag of extra. I think I got mine from Henning's. It's just good to have extras. The relay back in place. And you want to make sure that's nice and tight, so otherwise it doesn't ground properly. Let's try that whistle. Still works. It's always nice when something still works after you're done. So many of the pre-war tenders used a draw bar like this, as opposed to the post-war that tended to use draw bars like this that mounted where the truck mounted. They're different heights, so you really can't switch them back and forth easily. What I'm going to do, also because this draw bar is too long, is I want to do something of a custom draw bar so I can run the pre-war or the post-war engines with it. So now that the trucks are switched, we're just going to put the uh, tender back together. Okay, and now my 224W is back to the way it should be. So I would put it on the rails with my 225E, but as you can see, there's no motor in it. I got as far as part two of my three-part series on the 225Es, and then I stopped. So I've got two of them sitting here without motors in them. This one's interesting. This must have been a gunmetal gray one that somebody painted black at some point. It's kind of a shame. So I came out here to the ice box of a garage to run this tender and realized I don't have anything working that will pull it because of the drawbar. It's too cold out here to run a train anyway. So 
I'll run this at another time. Thanks for watching. I hope you found the video helpful. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on DA Griffin Hobby. Oh, oh, yeah, it's been cold.